Okay, hey, welcome to End Games. Um, tonight we're talking about memes and uh, whatever. And uh, this is uh, basically a talk show that happens weekly. And your hosts are uh, Papa Po, Psych, Nomino, and my God, I can't it's pronounce Sebastian. that name. It's Sebastian. Sebastian, okay. Sebastian. <laughs> Away we go. <laughs> hey, thank you. Yeah. How, how are you guys doing? You, you guys feeling okay today? Pretty good. Oh, pretty good. Yeah, pretty, yeah, no. Let's start no. by talking to someone in the community about what they think the future is about. Uh, let's talk to Squid this week. And Squid, make sure you don't get too close to the stage. All right. <laughs> He's <laughs> He's him, him, but, but make uh, sure that uh, Ghost uh, can see you. He's drifting past. Hello. <laughs> hello, Squid. How are you? Um, so. I'm doing okay. Um, so, what are your general feelings about the future? Like, how pessimistic or optimistic are you? Pretty excited for the future, honestly. Like, with virtual reality, like this whole, you know, like this whole idea of like a Ready Player One kind of virtual space. I don't know. Like, Wait, have I'm, you seen I'm the trailer to Ready Player One? I have. Yes, it's very interesting. Like, we all watched it in uh, Owl Boys Theater, and as soon as it was done, we just went like, "Hey, this is VR chat in 20 years." <laughs> <laughs> were people actually pretty optimistic about that? Like, because my experience actually was with young people who were really shitting all over it. They thought it looked r ridiculously stupid. Maybe we're a little biased because, you know, we are really all into, you know, virtual reality. And, uh, Maybe a little bit. You know, we, we, we like really hope that that's what kind of VR chat becomes. But like just in general, there is a lot of pessimism towards, you know, like VR from people who haven't really tried VR, right? Like if you ever if you ever look at like Facebook sure, yeah. comments on anything like Oculus or HTC puts out, it's all like it's a gimmick. It'll be dead next year. Uh, okay. Aside from virtual reality, let, let let's assume that. Like, so do you think we're gonna stick around here as a species? Like, hundred years from now, are we still cool? Oh, hundred years from now, for sure, for sure. I don't think like for the sure. Earth is gonna really be in the same state. I feel like within the next at least sixty to eighty years, I feel like somebody is going to figure out a way to sort of digitize our, our whole existence to the point where we like our, our brains can sort of be converted to some sort of, you know, mm. readable computer format. Okay. How long before you have an AI best friend? Uh, I, I would give it maybe 20 years. I don't know if you guys watch a show called Minefield uh, by the guys who made Vsauce. Oh, yeah. But, uh, oh, yeah. They recently did something where they ran an experiment. It was kind of like a, a blind date fake show that they put on where they had like they had three booths each one had a guy in it well two of them had a guy one had a uh, clever bot in it so it's the turing test and uh yeah pretty much the turing test but they're trying to figure out like what like is ai advanced enough yet that uh if you didn't know it was an ai like would this be something that is dateable pretty much mm. well and okay so at some point pass the turing test i mean it did it two, two of the two of the people like two of the four people they put through this fake show chose Cleverbot. How deeply are you going to love your AI companion? Uh, probably not that much. I think I'm smart enough to know that this is still a computer, you know, without, but, you know, real feelings. But why does it have to do with your intelligence? Why can't like, hmm. So the smarter just, you are, the more you can put, I you don't, can push your emotions to, I, guess, like, I don't know about that. <laughs> Maybe it's not the smarter I am, but it's more that, like I myself, like I'm, I, I know how to program, right? I'm, I'm. It's something I'm, I'm doing right now in school, and I'm. It's something I plan to go into as, you know, a career. And it's just sort of that I, like, if I kind of know how the inside and how the guts of this work, and that, you know, like where all my information and data is going, and how it's being interpreted and being sent back, that kind of abstracts me from the whole situation, as opposed to somebody who sat down at a computer, typed to it, and it's just, you know, it's, it's magic to them. I think it's more that, that I really sense. understand what's happening to the information. Yeah, and if you, if you I mean, understand the, the mechanics, bots, and, right? Yeah. Like the chatbots are are programmed to fake feelings and fake, you know, they're they're it's not programmed yeah. to to be a sincere emotion or a sincere thought. It's supposed to fool you into thinking there's real thought there. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be like Siri or something. Like like Magic Leap just came. Another big piece of news is that Magic Leap like revealed their underlying prototype for the augmented reality device and everything. And that the friend or whatever is going to be kind of like a, an assistant that we have, like Alexa or whatever. But it's going to be a virtual agent that is embodied, and so therefore we'll be able to develop a deeper attachment. So we'll know it's a robot, but 
it'll become this kind of companion that we have. And so like he's talking about when you understand the underlying mechanics, like you sort of see through it and the magic is gone, right? That's why we're not going to fall in love with AI. But as you study psychology, aren't isn't that exact same thing happening with humans where like you're you recognize more and more how humans are working and like you might see them fall into patterns more and more and like does that mean that your love for them diminishes? No. You personally? That's a good point. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Yeah, I think it uh, can increase because you can increase the appreciation of what you're experiencing. Um, and I think that's why embodiment, like in VR, for example, we know that this is like a fictitious, like virtual world. It doesn't look photorealistic, but yet our brains are still able to accept and treat it almost like reality. So I think that's kind of a similar uh, thing that that. So we know how it's working, but. Um, uh, as it becomes more and more able to affect us on a kind of primal unconscious level of our being immersed in it, then I think that's where it can circumvent those uh, the, the ways that we know how it's working underneath and still affect us emotionally um, so that we can develop like an attachment or whatever to the, to the mm -hmm. virtual object. I think if that, if that relationship, though, is based on, like, truth rather than a fakehood, though, I think it's much more... Like it's gonna be, it's gonna be much more meaningful. Like, um, yeah, I'm, that's true. I'm, I also like, I'm also into programming and software development, and I found that as I learned, uh, the the algorithms and processes that went into building, uh, this technology, like I gained, like I did start to have an emotional connection with it that I didn't have before. Like it was kind of a stronger, like a stronger appreciation for it and everything, but not because it's trying to fool me into thinking it's a living being. It's because I like I, I understand it more and so like I have more like real affection for it rather than affection for the illusion of it. Uh yeah, Squid, how do memes impact us now, especially in VR and where do you think it's going in the future? I feel like they've kind of split off now in the kind of two directions. I mean like memes have obviously been around forever, like since the nineties, like or even eighties, you know, but it's uh like like what a meme is in general is kind of like sort of like a kind of like an inside joke between a certain culture, mm -hmm. like a social group. And so now that we have the internet, the internet itself is, you know, one big culture, one big group of subcultures and groups. Um, and so now that we have, you know, this, this ability to communicate like that, I feel like, you know, like memes have a lot, like as of recent become much more, you know, malicious. And, you know, there, there's, there's kind of like, one road where memes are kind of going the same way they've always been, and one road that's, you know, 4chan. A split is the malicious thing is like 4chan or whatever. You're saying that's like the malicious direction, but then the other I direction, do you think that's more neutral or is there something good about that direction? Like, what do you I mean? I would say it's, it's, it's kind of like, I would say there's no, I would say it's kind of like neutral and good and then, you know, bad. Like, you know, you've got memes that make fun of memes. You've got, you know, just cat pictures and images and then you've got stuff like swatting and stuff like you know when when people figure out like when people get uh you know a streamer's address you know like one of the first things they do is they call their local police department and now you know you've got compilations online on youtube of you know streamers getting swatted they they get the police called to their house like they say that there's, there's some like horrible thing, so thing happening so address trying oh stop me. man yeah. Yeah. So if you don't know what SWAT thing is, it, 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 someone calls the SWAT team on you, right? So like they'll make a threat Holy or something, crap. and then they're gonna bust into your house. Mm -hmm. But like I didn't realize that was considered a meme. And like, is doxing mm -hmm. a meme? Like that's not what I thought of as memes. It's a doxing. Well, I feel like I feel like mm. if it's something doxing that somebody is when gets... you get you out somebody's like public at, or their real life location, right? Or like their their mm -hmm. personal address, so people their can. Uh, or yeah. Well, that's where the memes come from. Like, I wouldn't say that doxing is a meme, but it's it's malicious and it's you know it's it's with you know harmful intent, but it's done you know for the like comedic value and for you know for the internet. It's so they can upload it to 4chan, and you know. You know, swatting isn't as big as it used to be, but that was a whole thing in, you know, 2013 through 2014, even 2015 a little bit. So when it started to kind of die down. What do you think should happen? Like, is, is there, does someone need to step in or do we have to do something as a society or is this, should this behavior just continue or will it naturally change? I think it'll just naturally change, honestly. Like it's, it's like memes are never around more than, you know, most of them nowadays, more than a month. You know, swatting was just mm. around, like, if it, when it's a bit more of, like, a physical thing, you know, like, um, 
I find when it's a physical meme, it's either around for a week or it's around for years. When it's something, you know, like um, I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC or like, you know, uh, what was, you know, remember if everyone remembers that boy, you know, those are usually around for maybe a month at a time. You know, like images and like these very neutral sort of memes have a lifespan of, you know, maybe like a month, two months. Or things that are physical, like the Harlem Shake, um, tend to be around for, you know, either a week or two years. Our friend like uh, Ajit Pai was doing the Harlem Shake in his video, and that went over. Oh, really well. oh, I didn't yeah. want to throw up. I thought it was a parody, but then I realized, like, uh, it's actually him. Do they understand really, what parody know. is? Like, do they... Um, uh, I don't man, know who or what really you're horrible. talking about. Like, right after we'll that neutrality. Spirit yeah. neutrality. Mm-hmm. And then he had a video. Mm-hmm. And he was like, don't worry, the internet's not dead. And he did all these, like, yeah. memes. And, like, he probably got paid, like, $1,000 per second. I thought if you add up mm-hmm. all the... Uh, money that he got from who is he anyway he, he's, he's the, the guy head who of the fcc for Comcast the guy that and verizon and yeah a dirty for, for net providers not to have to be able you to do seen the this guy he's all over stuff. the That's internet true. like his uh, his face I, is the main face mean, that you he's see he's he's go, he he's is the meme right, right now i have avoided certain things but like um that's that seems surreal uh, is that is it like bizarre? Or is it, like, I thought it I was a understand. parody that I couldn't believe that. Yeah, that video would. Be we we but... have gone like reality yeah. has taken a weird turn where I I yeah I can't tell what's yeah. real anymore. It's very strange. Yeah, uh, and one of the uh, one of the bigger memes right now actually is in that in that video as Pai says you know oh with after net neutrality you can still watch all your favorite shows and then he's got some show in the background and he's green screen eating popcorn and he looks back at the camera. And what people have actually done, what the the new hot meme is, is somebody took him, cut him out of that shot. (laughs) And so now they will, you know, put him in front of, you know, Hitler, you know, saying a speech. And there's just Ajit Pai there (laughs) front and center just eating his popcorn looking back like, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and it actually gets worse. Like they'll, they'll put the mm-hmm. the worst stuff you could possibly imagine. Oh and he's he's just approving sure. and like eating up his popcorn. Yeah, yeah. And you know yeah, we're gonna yeah, put yeah. him watching us. But the, I, 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 we have to figure out a way to make that funny. <laughs> 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 I, I would like to kind of piggyback off of the future of memes thing. There there are two sides of it. Yes, it is going in a positive and negative direction. You have the four chan style memes, and then you have some of the playful ones. That there's actually a subculture of teenagers that are doing these really just silly ones where they're drawing them themselves and um, that's kind of a playful fun direction that it's going but there's also another direction that it's it's already gone in the past couple years that people may have overlooked and that is actually the meme economy which they're tokenizing and trading memes and i've seen memes actually yeah. trading for for hundreds of dollars sometimes even thousands if you're looking at rare pepe which is actually the 4chan realm of memes and you have rare Pepe memes literally selling, buying and selling for, for thousands of dollars. And uh, my company is actually doing a meme factory, which we par- partnered with GIFs.com, which will allow you to create your own memes, tokenize them and trade them. Mm. And so then there's the e- economy side of it. And um, I'm, of course, excited about the tokenization of, of digital rare digital collectibles because i think it can be applied to more important things but that's really what i see of of the future of memes is really becoming like monetized so how does that work like it's a meme so like i literally just screenshot right. it the bitcoin episode dude we talked I about it for not. 20 minutes but it's I like still, and i yeah. never understood what the fuck he was talking about yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's like yeah i mean co- okay, how well, did how do you keep people from using the meme like to just take it screenshot well, it, you don't stick it you screen. don't it's just like it's like bitcoin but instead of it being like just a bitcoin it's actually a picture that is also a crypto token tied to a picture um using cryptography connecting it on the blockchain that image so, not- so anyone can use the image but it's actually a tokenization of the image actually oh, crypto nice. kitties is probably a perfect example of tying images to a crypto token so it's it's kind of is- like like a real painting like there's a painting that everybody knows is the original and then there's copies floating everywhere but the right. one that's valuable is the one that's associated with the token so it doesn't matter right, if you the copy one- it the original yep. token okay all right so it's that's, just, that's it exactly has the it. value that people give it give to it this kind of commercialization is so bizarre to me. Like, what platform is that taking place on? Blockchains. I just, but 
it, that's so, so it will sort of do matter like what, what ends up taking off right because it's like up to us it's going to be decentralized and if we all agree to jump on a platform then that will become a powerful thing but like so if um, that were to happen like let's assume that within the next 10, 10 years that happens and then we're actually trading these what does that mean like what does that mean for the next decades how does that change society well, that's the thing it isn't going to happen in the next 10 years. It's been happening for roughly the past few years. And uh, there's a subculture of people actually into meme trading right now. And uh, what we're doing is actually piggybacking off of it because a lot of them are actually kind of a semi-centralized system where there's a small group of people who kind of dictates uh, how that market actually functions. And Crypto Kitties is actually a really interesting one where you're breeding digital cats. And it's just images of cats tokenized and people want the the rarest genetics of these cats and they're a crypto token so they go up in value and you see people paying thousands of dollars for the, a picture of a cat that trades on a blockchain like a bitcoin um so it's already happening in fact um crypto kitties actually dominated the ethereum network so much that it bogged it down and it was almost unusable during mm. the peak of people trading essentially what is just a meme um it's kind of yeah more than that because they gamified it and it's more than just people trading memes for no reason it's actually a game but it's already so been happening for the, the, the past to, few years to, to knock down the blockchain it, it, they did they actually uh, made mean, ethereum slow to a crawl to where you couldn't even really use it unless you paid nearly 15 dollars per transaction just to get oh, it to great. actually go oh, man these things are so reliable i'm so glad yeah. that we're all investing on the blockchain <laughs> like it's gonna it's... Yeah, i think it's interesting that memes have this much value in general and like even if it's this is just an extension of the value that memes have in general i think with their emotional appeal it's like memes are funny we get to participate it's like identity like those kinds of things and this is kind of uh, fusing consumerism um, with that, that so that people feel this sense of identity and ownership of the meme if they're purchasing it and trading it and all those kinds of things. But it's kind of interesting because some people might be more skeptical of this idea of a meme and like thinking about some of the politics that have happened in America and how like far away we've gotten from actually discussing like real issues because of all these, I think also memes that are appearing in like the news and things like that, that can be distracting and stuff like that. So it's kind of, um, it's kind of like we can get, I feel like our culture can get lost in the entertainment of the meme and kind of all that kind of stuff. And sometimes it can bring us further away from reality in some ways, even though they're funny and culturally relevant. Although I'm not clear exactly how we're defining meme as well. So I don't know if anyone, well, any I of you guys had. Let's, yeah, let's take, let's put the brakes on and just define memes uh, between us. And, and especially if we have a different way of looking at it than what's already been mentioned. And, and the reason I have Sebastian here is because I was trying to talk with you, I think, maybe last year, because yeah. it's really hard for me to understand what memes are. Like, I don't fucking get it. And you're younger than I am, so I sort of made a big assumption that you got it. And you, and you did more <laughs> than I do. Um, so, like, do you remember how, like, how, how do you, what's a meme to you? I mean, I think, like, the basics of a meme is there's a format, and then you're kind of taking a moment from culture, like an idea or a thought you have, and you're injecting it into this format and so that way mm. uh, it's not really it's kind of like a puzzle piece of like collecting formats and like taking your ideas and your thoughts and putting it into those those formats is the original template so like before it gets imitated is that considered a meme or is it only a meme after it gets imitated a million times i would say it's only a meme after it gets imitated i think like the original uh doesn't really have much value. That's why I was confused about the cryptocurrency. Is the meme that's been recreated the thing? Is, is that the product or is it the thing beforehand, like the original format? I mean, that's my impression too, is that memes are valuable because they're mutatable, because they change. Like they're used as a sort of like a, a, like a collective language. Like you have to understand the joke to propagate the joke and to like change the joke in your own way. And so, like, it's it is kind of a form of communication. Yeah, exactly. And like, I think like a meme becomes more valuable, like the more you're able to like reuse it and like re like. I think a lot of memes it's have very powerful. short lifespans. Yeah, but like the Harambe meme, like I think it went through so many phases of being funny and then not funny because it's being right. reused so many times. I think that like yeah is what made it like a powerful meme. Yeah. 
I think we saw that too in with the Pete meme or whatever that became like this alt right meme that people were saying was this alt right meme. I actually think that that was kind of more of a political strategy by the, like the people who were claiming that than the fact that it was because like yeah, like tons of people were using that. It's still used all the time, and I don't think it means like what it it was projected to mean based on well, how it was people from the artist. And that's yeah, actually yeah. kind of an interesting yeah. point is because like the, that meme like was was neutral, like it didn't mean anything in particular. But then yeah, like, until, this one yeah. particular group, this malicious group started using it, um, you know, viciously. And because of that, it became like globally associated with that group, which I think is an yeah. interesting phenomenon that we should talk about sometime is that how the people who are the most like violence and and like militias get to decide what symbols mean but um, also i don't think it was actually history i mean some of the con some of the like conspiracy type uh uh reddit like subreddits actually traced back so and had links to like some of the original usages of it and it wasn't being used by i mean i'm not trying to defend these are horrible groups but i'm just saying that i think it was more at that time actually the democratic strategy to make it seem like they were using it to like uh, negatively characterize people who weren't even associated with the groups in the first place. So that now when everyone saw those memes, they associate. So it became a new meme essentially for the people who were horrified by what it meant with the new meaning that was ascribed to it by attention that was given and yeah, by so inferring like that, that it belonged. Whole, like, it was a complicated. You seem to think that everyone on the alt-right is malicious. My, some of my best friends are on the alt-right. They're fine. Um, That's what I'm saying. I, I don't think it's I mean, points over here. The alright is not yet. Yeah, anyway. not serious, psych. <laughs> um, so I just had a Sarah had a had a thought on meme. Uh, she says a meme is a recognized and repeatable inside joke that has gone viral. So hmm. is part of it that it has to be recognized? Like the viral nature means that there's a majority of people that get it. But I guess the the reason I went to you is because I felt like I was on the outside. Like there were these memes that were just fucking rushing by and there was a tsunami or of them Twitch too. I, they, I, all the faces that are going up and things like that that's what i feel like is happening yeah viral means that it propagates not necessarily that everyone is in on it it just means that it like yeah, but if it's propagating yeah. doesn't that mean that most of the people that are sharing it understand what it's about no uh well, really? I, mean, I think sometimes. it depends on the meme. I think there's like memes that are supposed to be there's a whole subreddit of surreal memes where the entire purpose is like you don't understand exactly what yeah. the joke is. I think like people enjoy that kind of like creating this fantasy world where they understand a joke that no one else does. Yeah, it's understanding. I think that's really interesting. Like it's not actually I don't think actually memes are memes seem to be created by what we project onto them, not by what they are objectively meant to represent which is kind of what we've been yeah. talking about a little bit. It's like we're projecting the meaning. And so if someone's sharing a meme, then they're, they might be meaning a whole different kind of thing um, when they're sharing it than what yeah. others perceive it to be. But if they're, and that's probably helps it go viral too, because if someone sees something that's shared, they think it's funny for a different reason or, you know, they, you know, right. and then it becomes a bigger and bigger thing. So like thing. things that are relatable are going to be more successful as memes. Like the, like the, the one that you suggested for our tweet where the house was on fire and the dog is sitting there saying it's fine. Like that's a, that's a, that's a successful meme because everyone loves it. Cause they, they know what that feels like, or, or they, pre, you know, project their understanding of it onto that. And so it becomes again, a form of communication. Interesting. And it's a great like, template because it can least. plug any kind of disaster into it. And it's like yeah. hilarious. Yeah, exactly. I saw Squid had the. Uh, I did. Yeah, I just wanted to put in that I could, I think a lot of memes nowadays are just funny because of you know the idea of groupthink. You know, where like everybody finds it funny, so you know, like people are just trying to search around for the joke. Like, like who, like who really understood the idea behind you know that boy? It's a frog on a unicycle. Like, what what was really the joke there? Wait, and I feel like a lot of people were, and they're just like jumping on board because they want to be on the bandwagon. Like, I wonder what percentage of that is true. Uh, has anyone ever done that? I feel like I've participated in a joke without. Um, I, I, you didn't I, understand. I'm too scared to. Yeah. Like, I'm so scared it's gonna mean something like really offensive, so I don't, I don't participate in that. Mm. Yeah. Um, maybe that's cowardly of me. I don't know. Have you have you jumped on the bandwagon? Have you shared memes and laughed at jokes that you didn't understand just to be within the in-group? Thumbs up. Uh, thumbs up. I'll admit, it, 
I have. Sometimes I think I'm part done. of a meme <laughs> meme's humor is just that you don't know what it is. So a lot of people will find things mm. funny just because it's absurd. It's like absurdist humor. You know, you you find a lot of these memes, especially on Reddit, certain subreddits, where they don't necessarily have any intrinsic meaning. It's just that they're so absurd that they become then funny based on their absurdity. That's like comedy is like built on the unexpected. And so like, I think that's part of mm -hmm. a meme in and of itself is like this kind of unexpected quality that like a lot of memes hold. Because that's the only yeah. way it's going to be funny if it surprises you. Do you think like there's a problem with that? Um, like, is there a problem with surrealism and the, and the absurdism? Like, can that take us down a strange path? Here's my problem, right? Like, I, I see these memes floating around, and I, I sense that they are a really powerful tool because you you know you can propagate ideas. And we haven't talked about Richard Dawkins, right? So Richard Dawkins, I think, coined the term meme as like a cultural gene, like something that gets mimicked throughout like culturally, and. Right. So like that seems incredibly powerful. Like we can we can spread ideas rapidly into huge groups of people because we can do it with symbolic language and you know we'll crystallize an idea down into one little comic strip or whatever and we can share it. And that seems really powerful, especially in a world today where everything is confusing and there's you know, like we've seen we've seen it be like successful in politics. Like different um different countries have successfully like pushed like meme and like meme culture movements to like sway populations to one side or another like that's that's it but it's affected like elections and things like that like that has actually like happened and had a had a yeah, substantial I've, effect on things i think the meme exists as a byproduct of part of human nature which is heuristics so like we can't process all the information at once so we have to rely on these quick summaries to understand a situation and that's kind of where the meme lives. It's like this quick exposure to a stimulus that represents a more complex idea behind it. But I think a negative of that is that people can, um, we have a limited attention on our social media when we're on the internet and those are the kinds of things. So memes can consume our attention towards important things. And sometimes I think, I'm not saying it's bad to consume memes. I just think that they can distract away sometimes from important issues and they could be manipulated so that memes are focused. I mean, I think that's exactly, I think Trump came to power through memes. I mean, essentially he created his, these memes that everyone focused on and that was so ridiculous. And look what happened, um, not to get in, you know too deep into politics. And, but it's it's like, <laughs> um, that's that's how he, you know, these are memes that we're talking I mean, about. So it's like, of... I, I mean, I, I, yes, I see what you're saying, but I think like any language or any form of expression, like it can be used Used in all sorts of ways i think it defaults to like the the common denominator or whatever or the bare minimum or but i've se i've also seen memes used to provide like intelligent commentary on things but only if you get like all the jokes within jokes within jokes and like so it's only going to like affect like yeah. a narrow I feel population like XKCD is a little it. bit like that i don't know i don't get okay, those comics yeah. a lot of the time but i feel like people <laughs> find them really funny and i read it i'm like uh I think we're sort of agreeing that they can be powerful, right? Like memes are, are they could be frivolous and sort of absurd and surreal, and they could also change communication throughout the world and actually be a power, like a tool that will affect change. So do we need to take some amount of responsibility? Like, should we be, feel guilty if we're just being completely absurd and we're just exploring chaos when it is such a powerful tool? Or is, is that okay? Should we just be having fun and being silly and using it to sort of vent out just crazy ideas and be playful? Hmm. I'm, for me, I think a meme is like an art form. Like it's it's a painting and it's, it's no different. So I think we can't expect every painting to be this life-changing piece. I think we have to we go through enough practice memes to get a really good meme. Can I mm -hmm. can I ask? So, like, you make memes. It sounds like, and you you kind of talked about like injecting your own like opinion into them or or some form of expression. What do you make memes about? Like, what's your what? Yeah, what do you what do you do with them? I I've only made like a couple of memes. I'm I don't think I'm like that clever um, all the time when I'm coming up with memes. And so I think a lot of my personal memes tend to skew more towards the absurdist. And I think I try and okay. like take something that I find that everyone thinks is normal and try and make it as ridiculous as possible. Or, uh, I have, I made this like one meme that was like, 
a whole bunch of it was just human skeleton with like muscles i posted with like the caption like wow this is so relatable like this is so this is me um <laughs> because that's like the bare essential of a meme it's like oh this is relatable content this is me i think you can't really pinpoint a meme's like you can't pinpoint it into one sort of category because there's so many different categories of memes like their mm. video formats there's pictures just even simple words People have turned Harambe into when you see a gorilla in a game or you see a gorilla somewhere and just go, oh, that's a Harambe. It's like, it's not even the video itself, which it originally was. It's completely changed, like, the meaning of a meme in, in, in itself throughout the entire course of its lifetime. So you can't pinpoint a single meme into a single category because they change and divert themselves through different categories themselves. Right, like it, it mutates, or at least that's the point of the original like conceptualization, comparing it to a gene, is that it mutates over time. Like it starts as one thing and it eventually, you know, through enough repetition and reiteration, uh, becomes something totally different. And so the idea is that it's like a it's like a mental ecosystem of ideas and images and, and like all these different types of units of information and formats that propagate through us instead of through a biological world. On top of what he just said, um, and actually what all of us were talking about earlier in terms of it uh, really affecting um, culture and, and kind of being a medium of, of communication, I think it's really interesting when you just join like telegram groups and you hang out in there for a long time, you'll see entire conversations over the course of an, in a couple hours that are all done entirely in memes and they are full blown conversations it's almost fascinating to watch that it's developed to the point where it is almost like an entirely uh, new language. And even on Facebook, you have just pages and pages of, of just memes that it, it is almost like a whole conversation with, without even co any, any commentary. That makes me think of sort of the future. Like I, I see these memes as sort of this crazy acceleration in communication, right? Like we've seen how communication has been drastically increasing over time and it's only been in this recent decades that we can communicate with anyone in the world with the click of a button, like immediately it's, it's crazy. And memes are sort of, we can condense things down now and we can share them with everyone. And you were talking about like crystallizing things into little nuggets so they're digestible. If th is this going to keep going? Like what happens with Neuralace or what happens when we get augmented and we're going to be able to sort of perceive ideas even quicker? We're at the point now where I, like a meme today is like basically like it could be like a picture right i'm just going to show you an image with some text on it and like that's the speed at which i give a meme to you but it's what's going to happen when i'm just memeing a thought to you or i, I thought a meme to you i guess or like mm -hmm. how does this where does it go from here what's the next step um it could be have you seen that star trek episode uh where like they they tell um they have their entire language is conducted through references to, to oh folklore. I was just thinking that. I was thinking exactly. Yeah. Um, where, like, they, they can't, uh, they're, the translation software of the, um, uh, of the crew or whatever doesn't work on these people because it works on their language literally, but these people, like, their, their language has gotten so meta that they can't speak without referencing other things, basically. And so, like, their entire, they, they've got this re meta referencing going on. Uh, in their communication, which almost seems like it could happen, except at least in the way it is now, like nobody's all referencing the same thing. Everybody's got a different like frame of reference for all the different memes and all the different stuff going on in the world. So we don't have a, like a common, mm. like a, a common dictionary of memes, yeah. it seems like. I it think... seems like something like that could happen. Yeah, and that's I was thinking about as you were saying that I was thinking about like a like back you were mentioned like the neural lace or like if we have like you know some kind of AI in our brains and things like that I was thinking about QR codes and how you can scan a QR code right now and like it gives you all this information and stuff so I mean you could literally have some kind of QR code that prompts a series of ideas or con conveys Whoa. meaning um, in a way that it like the, that can be deprogrammed. Like so like it'll force into your mind like the image of a dolphin and then like a bank safe and then yeah, some third thing yeah 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 that like huh. 
That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like slowly builds like the references that you need in order <laughs> to understand the content. Yeah. Or Ooh. maybe it'll be different for each person and it'll be able to target whatever you're going to find humorous about the specific topic or whatever. Um, target that emotion. So. Yeah, you're a young person. Like, if we're old and it takes me a while to understand what memes are, and like, I'm always going to be a little bit behind. Like, is, are the idea of memes something that's sort of new to your vocabulary that you've grown up with? And so it will, and perhaps the next generation after you who will exist in a world where the memes have, you know, matured to some degree. Like, are they going to have sort of a one up on us because they can, like, communicate all these crazy things much quicker? Like, do, do you understand more language than we do? because you're communicating in a, a different way. I don't think that I do just because like of the quick lifespan of memes. Like I think memes move by so quickly that it's pretty easy to, cause I don't think like I'm like a meme expert or anything. Like I think that I like dabble in like the meme world, but I know people who are like a lot more invested in it. And I think like it's pretty easy just to say like, Oh, I don't know that meme. Like I don't think there's so many memes out there that like, if you don't know the entire vocabulary, you can still function in it just because it moves so quickly. You know, people aren't judging you for not understanding. Yeah. I think there's so many memes that like, if you are like, you have a certain vocabulary of memes, you can kind of make do. Mm. Does that make I feel sense? Like we're going to be old. Like a, I feel like we're going to be old and just like bring out some meme and like our kids are just going to think like, what the hell? That was so, that was like eight years ago. That's and true. I'm just going to think gonna it's have, the funniest thing. And they're going to, we're going to yeah. have memes that they're not going to have. And you know, that, so we've, we've got language. Our too. memes are going to be like so old and crusty, you guys. Old like these yeah. kids gonna... One last like thing that just, I don't know, just came to mind for me at least is that like VR chat has facilitated i think that's what we've seen with all the streamers like why are, why is the streaming blowing up so much it's because of memes and people are embodying memes and so it's like someone comes up dressed as one kind of character and like it's a hilarious situation that's almost an impossible situation of com combining characters in this hilarious interaction or whatever so it's, you i think know, it's probably, yeah it's probably a meme to do VR streams or VR chat streams because like it's like every everyone's doing it because everyone else is doing it and it's like the thing. Yeah, but it's crazy and it's catching on. It's funny like there are these yeah. new random things that are happening and then I've never seen Twitch before but I saw the streams of like faces going by and I had to ask someone like what the hell why are all these like people pay pasting but like each ch twitch channel has its own set of like emojis that you can use to you can unlock to respond and so that's another value to memes and stuff like that but just watching vr chat being streamed on twitch with the memes going by of people's faces and facial expressions as like emojis i thought it was uh it's just like this is we are this is the evolving meme culture right here happening in vr chat in front of us so it's kind of mm. it's crazy I would love at this point for people, if anyone has a meme avatar, I think you got to switch into it and sort of parade yourself around. And maybe yes. you might have to explain what Look, your meme is. Any, any meme <laughs> there we go. So letters? this is like a VR, VR chat, chat meme. See? Yeah, but that only works good. for the that only works for like the, the older VR chat people, like he, like this. Right, There's maybe right. three Wait, yeah. people around who will still understand like, what, what that is. I have Kratos water in a room. I can put a at the does after that, this. I can show you guys his wait, water. <laughs> wait, so does that make it old and crusty, or does that make it, it does. like for a selective elite audience? It, well, I like both, it. I guess it's, it's like it's, it depends on how you view I, it, right? The viewer so discretion. <laughs> yeah. So if you feel like. <laughs> well, it's like, so if, if you decide you feel exclusive, like, oh, well, I was here when we first made the Kratos water meme. So I, you know, I, I know okay. better. Or it's like, so everybody's like, I don't know what that means. It's, it's, I don't even know Kratos water. I didn't even know this was a meme, honestly. I just know Kratos water. Like, I'm assuming my assumption seeing that is that we're talking about the Kurito, the guy who uploads Amazing World, yeah. and that we're talking about right. the amazing water in his room. And like, I remember from years ago going into his the, the Golden City. He had this amazing room with this water that was just like unbelievable reflections and things like that. It was amazing. So I never, oh, I didn't know this I think was the a idea meme. Was that his original water wasn't good. Like it was sort of like not great. And I think that was the original joke was that it wasn't good. Really? And so, yeah. And so some it. people were like, we're talking well, Tom, trash Tom on it. And Tom then... probably knows better than Yeah. Him. Where did it come from, yeah, Tom? Okay. So it all started when uh, me and basically 
figured out doing or in a world like way way in earlier days. Um, what? I, I don't know why far I away from phone. your microphone. I think you have the wrong <laughs> microphone selected, man. <laughs> Are you in the other room? Right oh my god. Okay. What? So we were just in a room, and aqueous water was in the room, which is what Ewan was showing off, and Ewan was telling Dorito that his water was terrible. I was defending Kirito, even though I didn't know anything about his water. I just kept on saying that Kirito's water is the best water. I love Kirito's water. <laughs> and so eventually, I just started telling that to everybody that I met. Absolutely everybody, whether they knew what I was talking about or not. And eventually, it just spread into the fact that I became Kirito's water. And then I started selling, like, or giving away propaganda items and stuff like that, like coffee mugs. You are a meme. Yeah, yeah, that's this is a living me. Oh, living me. Yeah. Wow, living it's, me. it's an honor to. I can't use his microphone, apparently. So, what's yeah. interesting about this is like, um, someone brought it up, but like, it does bring us together, right? Like, if you're a part of that small community that remembers that, it's like, oh, we have a connection now. It's like a bonding yeah, experience. It's a new emotional and experience, it's like a... too. It's a novelty. Like, I'd never really thought about Carito's water except in my past experience of it where I thought, whoa, this is cool, but now I have a novel association with that construct that I've experienced in the past. So it's like it's humorous. It's like, yeah, it's a lot of positive emotions and in, in response to it. <laughs> um all right, McMuse. Yeah, I had one other thing to say that we didn't really touch on is uh how augmented reality being widespread, which it likely will be within the next several years, uh what effect that's gonna have on memes because you're not going to have pe your people aren't going to get your permission and they're going to make a meme out of you in real time while they just have a set of augmented reality glasses mm. on. And they're going to look at you, take a snapshot of that funny face you just made and make a meme out of you and spread it all over the Internet. And you're going to have a lot of weird social issues because of that. And that's coming really fast. Yeah, well, yeah I think honest. we have to do a whole episode about that phenomenon. It's on the way. To be yeah. honest, I don't think people really get permission for it anyway. So. I mean, you no, can go that's, with, like, people Walmart, it's just going to accelerate. Yeah, but yeah. I'm thinking of like, there, there's Google probably Walmart's like nine or ten people, <laughs> like yeah, we'll images now on the internet, yeah. like where somebody got an image taken oh, of them. Yeah, like that dude like, in college. Yeah, I know you're Yeah, or like the Goosebumps about. girl, you know, like yeah, all of them. Yeah. Like they actually had an article about her, which was interesting. You know, she like the, the the whole so the anybody who's seen the meme with it's like the girl she's got like the the crazy braces and she's holding up the goosebumps book and it's like the oh my god or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. I actually read an interview with with her and it and it it was actually something she did for fun. Her and her friends thought it would be funny. Like they grabbed all the books and she decided, all right, I'm gonna find these really nerdy glasses and put on these fake braces and make the stupid face and take a picture. And so it was something they did kind of as a joke among themselves. And then it just, you know, now it's everywhere. What, what are, you? are you? Is that a meme that you are? Tablet? I'm a mind turtle from Asduff movie. I don't know what that is. From, never from, that. from what? See, I don't even know what that is. Hey, it's Asduff. Uh, it's I like know a, what those are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ASDF movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know that. The mind turtle enough. is exactly that. It's a mine in the form of a turtle. So when you step on it, it explodes. Hello, mind turtle. Hello. Oh. Um, oh, I think yeah, we should okay. all either step on the mind turtle, or maybe yeah. we should all just say I love Carito's water for the big group picture. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. I like Carito's yeah, water. Yeah. Splash. <laughs> or, so, or How do we make that crazier? It's a cold. We're sitting on someone's side. Oh no. Hello. There's a little, little woman. I have a moment to spare to talk about Carito's <laughs> water today. It goes well with shampoo in your hair. <laughs> Change tonight.